I want to go ahead in 77 to the open at Turnberry. It was famously known as the duel in the sun. And the battle that you had once again with Jack Nicholas over the weekend was historic. It was so incredible. But even as we look at that final round, Jack Nicholas was through four holes, three strokes ahead of Tom Watson in that final round. And it's remarkable to me because you came back from that deficit against Jack Nicholas. What are your memories from that point? Well, it was a it was a heavyweight fight, is what it was. Jack <laughs> did uh, he buried the fourth hole to, you know, and and uh, was up by three. Uh, then I turned it on. I buried three out of the next four holes to tie him up. Then I bogeyed nine. He buried ten to go two up. Then I buried thirteen to go uh, to go uh, one down. And then uh, the big. The big happening of the whole day was the putt at 15 from off the green. Uh, Jack hit a beautiful shot right in there. Uh, I, I actually had pulled my forearm just to the left of the green, but it was up on, on a little hill like this. You know, there's no grass on the golf course, so I could putt it down this hill. Jack hit it right at the flag, about 15 feet short. And uh, uh, I looked over this putt. It broke about five feet to the right, and... I, I knocked I knocked the son of a gun in, and Jack just missed his putt, and and now we're back to even. So we we both par the the, the really tough 16th hole, and then the 17th hole Jack made an uncharacteristic error. Uh, he uh, he outdrove me just a little bit. Uh, I hit first to the par five. I knocked it to the back of the green. Jack hit a four iron and hit it fat and to the right. It was a terrible shot. And he was off the green and there was a bunch of little moguls over there and he hit this beautiful little pitch and run. With, I don't know what club, a, a pitching wedge or a nine iron that ran up and down through the moguls up about four feet from the hole. I put it by ball down uh, for a gimme birdie and stood back and watched Jack fully expecting to make the putt and he missed the putt. So now I go into the 18th hole, one up, and then all the fireworks happened again. So when you get to that 18th tee, and when Jack Nicklaus hit his drive to the right, how close was he with the gorse bushes over there and that? How close was he to a point where he may not be able to even get the club on the ball? And what did you expect Jack Nicklaus to do at that point when you were safe? Well, I hit a one iron, one iron off the tee down the left side, close to the bunkers, but fortunately didn't go in. Uh, and Jack took a driver and he hit a right to right like this. I yelled four because the crowd was, you know, it's way off, way off to the right. And the crowd kind of parted like this and the gorse was right behind the crowd. And so I, I'm one up, I walk up the fairway. And before I hit my second shot, I wanted to determine what type of shot Jack was going to play. I had to, had, had to play. So I walked up and I got pretty close to his ball. His ball was in the rough about that deep. And Whoa. the course was that far to the right of his ball. And it was un being unplayable. And, uh, but I, I told myself, well, he's, he's got a swing and the, and the greatest rough player in the world can hit, it was, it was about to play this shot. So I, I said, I've got to go back and hit a shot. And I did, I went back and, he had a pretty fair shot, pretty close to the hole. And, and then I walked up and watched Jack take this mighty swing out of this heavy rough. And that ball came out like this. And I said, only Jack could hit it like that. Uh, you know, there's a big <laughs> swath of grass at the end of his club on the follow through like this. And the ball hit short of the green and bounded up under the green about 30 feet from the hole. And, uh, you know, game was still on, uh, even though I hit it close. Uh, Jack Nicklaus, in his, his career, made more birdie putts than the last hole of a major championship than anybody else in the history of golf. So I had to expect him to make the putt. And when he putted it, you know, 10 feet from the hole, I said, that's dead center. And it was dead center in the hole, made a birdie. Wow. So I had to. I had to kind of collect, collect myself, but I was always, already prepared. I said, I'm going to have to make this putt uh, before he putted the ball. I'm going to have to make this putt. I wasn't, 
uh, thinking I had to hit it one. He had a 30 footer and I had a two and a half footer. I, I didn't, I didn't say, I didn't relax at all. And uh, when he made the putt, the, the crowd went absolutely ballistic. It was an aircraft, airplane roar, jet engine roar, and it didn't subside. It just kept on going and going and going. And I said, well, the heck with it. I'm just going to putt. I'm going to putt my ball when they're still cheering for Jack. So I went, bent down to, to put my ball down with my mark. And li as I was lifting up the, the mark, Jack is like this, puts his hands up. Class. The crowd went silent in about three seconds, only in the game of golf. They respected the game that much. Jack said, all right, let this man have his due. And uh, it went dead silent. I looked at the putt, took my two practice swings, and I put it in the right center of the hole. It wasn't dead center, but right center, and uh, won it. And at that time there, Matt, uh, when I walked off the green, Jack came over to me, and he put his arm around my neck like this, gave me a tug like this, and he looked at me. He said, Tom, I gave you my best shot, but it wasn't good enough. And he smiled and he said, congratulations, I'm really happy for you. And you know, at that point, Matt, in my career, that was the probably the biggest change in my career right now. When Jack said he gave me his best shot and it wasn't good enough, I said, now maybe I've arrived and I can beat and play with the big boys.